Paul Cook made two changes from the 11, which accounted for Waterford last time out. The Brian Cash and Mark Boyd coming in for Stephen Manson and the suspended Rafael Cretero. Pat Scully kept faith with the side who finished scoreless with St. Pat's the previous Monday. Commentary comes from Conor Frehl. Good strength by Kadozovic. Holds off the challenge. And a nice little bit of skill to boot. He's gone to ground a little easily. But he's managed to manufacture a free kick for his side. The Bosnian will take four to aim out in the middle. And one of those was Matthew Judge. And that wasn't very far away. Barry Murphy relieved to see that one flash past the post. A good delivery by Kadozovic. Judge out in front. Murphy appeared to have his angles covered. A fourth corner of the night. Brian Cash delivers. It's helped on towards the back post. And it was Conor O'Grady coming in. Gaffin Pierce flicked it on. It fell to the unmarked O'Grady. And that will go down as a real guilt-edged opportunity from there. Shamrock Rovers tried to build a thundering tackle from Gavin Pears and Hughes helps it out left to Gadozovic not renowned for his pace but he will take him on jinking left, jinking right, Gadozovic and Murphy had to be alert to the danger I don't think there's any doubt this was an intended cross either way Murphy was on hand to tip over. And that's hack clear to safety. McKenzie is the covering Sligo defender, but he's been shrugged off it by Tyke Purcell. A real opportunity. McKenzie got back. Purcell went to ground. Shamrock Rovers want a penalty. Pat Scully is absolutely incensed on the touchline. But his appeals have been waved away by the referee. A chance to see it again. McKenzie was caught napping, but did he get anything on the ball? That replay would suggest not. Once more, Matthew Judge is the target. He's had a real ding-dong battle with Barry Ferguson all evening. And the Shamrock Rovers captain is deemed guilty of an infringement. Kadozovic will deliver once more. That's towards the back post. So Grady rises highest. And once more, Barry Murphy keeps the Sligo one slot at bay. Oh, Grady got free once again at the back post. He managed to hit the target this time. Decent contact. But a fine, strong right hand from Barry Murphy. Oh, that's been charged down by O'Grady. He's bearing down on goal. Ferguson is the chasing defender. Well, he managed to get the strike off, but once more Murphy came to his defence's aid. He's been a real thorn in their side in the second half, Conor O'Grady. Or was there a little push by Ferguson? This replay should tell us there was indeed. Maybe that was just enough to put him off. Anxious times on the touchline for Pat Scully. Lawrence is the defender with Judge. That will come to Seamus Coleman. He's taken them on. He's beaten one. He's beaten two. It'll flick back inside towards Judge. He steered it across goal and it's in. Adam Hughes has played the captain's part to come up with the opening goal. Sligo are in front. And on the balance of play, you have to say it's what they deserve. Coleman was the orchestrator. It appeared to get away from Judge here, but he steered it back across goal. It was just beyond the reach of Gadozovic, but Hughes was coming in to find the back of the net. That's come to Coleman. Plenty of space on the right-hand side. He hasn't been afraid to get forward, and he's done so again here. Promising run by the fullback. Can he pick out a teammate? That was Judge. And that, you sense, is the three points for Sligo. Matthew Judge has come up with the goods yet again. A seventh league goal of the season. That's what it means to the home support. He's become a real cult favourite in Sligo.
But a lot of credit has to go to the fullback Coleman. He made the first. He began this move deep in his own half. An inch perfect pullback for his teammate. They say Judge doesn't do ordinary goals. That was just beyond the grasp of Murphy. Can the visitors claw themselves back into this contest? An enticing cross. Brush came but didn't cover himself in glory. And John Martin has gone to ground under his challenge. The referees wave play on. That's a nothing ball from Hughes. But it will be interesting to see that one again. Brush was committed. He didn't get anything on the ball. And the hoops will be more than a little aggrieved. They didn't get a penalty. And Pat Whelan brings the contest to a close. It's Sligo who come out on top in the Battle of the Rovers. The Hoops' nine-game run comes to a screeching halt at the showgrounds. It's finished Sligo Rovers 2, Shamrock Rovers 0. I can't ask for any more than the players. I just thought, at the end of it all, they're two blatant penalties. Two blatant penalties. Same referee that sent me off last year. I sent two of our players off this year. And again, they are two absolute stonewall blatant penalties. As I said, I can't ask any more from the players. They gave absolutely everything. And as I said, I don't feel we lost that game tonight. I'm delighted to win. Um, first half, we were, we were very poor. We never turned up to play the game first half. Um, we speak about these things at our time. I thought second half, we were fantastic. I thought we passed the ball. We scored some good goals. You know, defensively, we were a lot stronger second half. And when we got in the lead, that's how we think we should play football. We squeezed them in and we kept them in the second half. You know, I can understand what Pat's saying. For me, the second penalty is the most blatant penalty you see, and they don't give it. And somewhere along the line, myself and Pat, my assistants in trouble tonight, you know, over the line, they're not good decisions. There's three officials there. That's a penalty. Look, we've got some young players there, and they're very physical. They're full time. They've got experienced players, and physically, they try to play, bully us a little bit. But as I said, I wouldn't take away from that. Oh, we didn't lose that game today. We didn't lose that game today. That game was taken away from us. Some interesting comments there from the Shamrock Rovers manager. We didn't lose the game, but uh, he's furious there, isn't he, uh, Paul? Feeling that uh, refereeing decisions once again went against his team. I think he has every right to be. Um, you know, I think we're going to see the, the, the penalty claims in a, in a couple of minutes, but he's every right to be furious because when decisions like that go against you, you have every right to be irate right after a game. Um, so it didn't play too bad. I think in the in, in the light of day, I mean, they're third in the table, and um, they've every chance of finishing in the top four and. I don't think that can be put down to be a bad season with Sean McRovers. If they come up from the first division last year and finish in the top four in the Premier, with the squad Pat, Pat has there at the disposal, it'll be mm. a great achievement for them. So oh. maybe a little bit angry there after the game, um, but mm. probably had every right to be. Massive blow to their title ambitions, Sean McRovers. We've seen some howlers last year from referees in the league, uh, Pat. Um, how do you view these uh, decisions from the referee? I mean, were these blatant penalties? Well, to me they are, yeah. I mean, he's a long way away from this and obviously because the, the, the players switch fairly quickly. But, I mean, he's got to play the ball. He hasn't played the ball. He's taken the man down. The Rovers players in possession. To me, it's a penalty. Um, I don't know where the referee is and that's so it's probably difficult for him to see. Um, I actually thought there was three penalties in the game as well. I thought the push on Ferguson on O'Grady, I think, was a, was a penalty as well. Um, again, like I said, it's difficult. The ref, he's, he's up the other end of the pitch, but he doesn't play the ball. Mm. Rovers players in possession, a good chance of scoring a goal. It, it, it's definitely a penalty. Uh, the second one, again, the player is in possession of the ball, pulls it away from the goalkeeper, and he's taken down. And there's, you know, there's no excuse for that one. The referee's in a good position. It's a definite penalty, um, and it should have been. You just wonder why he doesn't give it. You know, in that circumstance, it's all right giving freeze outside the box and in not dangerous areas, but he's got to make the big decisions, and he's got them wrong. And the second one there, in particular, the linesman, it's right in there. The linesman's looking right at that. Mm. So why he doesn't give it? Maybe the referee looks to the linesman for assistance to see if he thought it was a penalty. The linesman didn't give it there either, so... OK, well, Sligo pick up the points and showing some uh, good form at the moment. Well, Bob